From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Really appreciate your time taking time to watch these videos. Today I want to talk about uh, respiratory acidosis. You see, respiratory acidosis basically it's increase in PCO2 in the blood. That is hypercapnia. That means carbon dioxide has increased, PCO2 has increased, and it always happens due to decreased ventilation or suppression of respiration. So let us first define respiratory acidosis. It is the elevated PCO2 more than 45 mmHg with a decrease in pH below 7.36. So those two numbers are important. More than 45 mmHg of uh, CO2 and uh, less than 7.36 of uh, pH. Now it's very important to see what are the causes for this problem? You see, as I said, think about every condition that suppresses the respiration and that suppresses the ventilation. For example, sedative hyperdose, narcotic hyperdose, and uh, uh, alcoholism, cardiac arrest, paralysis of respiratory muscles, and when you use uh, anticholinesterases, which causes respiratory paralysis anesthetics that causes respiratory paralysis, sometimes brainstem or uh, high spinal cord infections because they suppress the respiratory centers. Sometimes even uh, things like Gullenbury. Gullenbury causes, uh, the syndrome causes this respiratory paralysis. Myasthenia gravis, logarix, that is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, poliomyelitis, botulism, tetanus, and uh, sometimes uh, even uh, muscular dystrophy and sometimes myopathy of respiratory muscles. So these are the things that are muscular, pro muscular problems that cause respiratory depression. And hypokalemic myopathy, when potassium level goes down, and these people develop these uh, uh, respiratory muscle paralysis. And familial periodic paralysis, that's another condition that causes this problem. And sometimes uh, primary hyperventilation in the brain that suppresses the respiration. And also think about diaphragmatic muscle paralysis. When the diaphragmatic, the phrenic nerve paralysis happens, respiration is depressed. And the tracheal edema or stenosis, obstructive sleep apnea. What happens in obstructive sleep apnea? The respiration is depressed and the CO2 retention happens. Sometimes foreign body aspiration, it decreases the respiratory output of uh, CO2. Sometimes neoplasms in trachea. And uh, sometimes the fluids and bronchospasm. So these are the conditions that uh, cause these problems. And also think about lung infections like pneumonia. And the conditions like pulmonary edema when the uh, respiratory output and the overall respiratory activity of the lungs decreases. Pulmonary embolism, when the blood clots, um, just desaturates the major areas of the lungs. And uh, so these are the things, and think about the chest wall trauma, flail chest. So these are the things you should always remember when you think about uh, respiratory acidosis, when, which, whichever it is whatever it is that causes respiratory suppression. And the, one of the most common causes is COPD in the United States because a lot of people, a lot of smokers cause this uh, respiratory acidosis because of COPD and also obesity. I mean, big, big lungs. What, have, like, what happens when they have these big, big bodies? Uh, they have this Pickwickian syndrome when they, they can't take out that uh, air in and out of the lungs. The same is true with uh, uh, chronic uh, obstructive sleep apnea. The air exchange is not happening. 
that is the important thing so think about the causes and also the symptoms like uh, th these pa patients develop confusion headache and uh, stupor and uh, obtundation to uh, coma you see it starts like uh, irritability and coma and uh, it starts like that and uh, so many times just a headache and irritability but when the co2 goes like 75 and up these people can develop even uh, uh, common that's very very common in acute respiratory acidosis but chronic respiratory acidosis that gradually increases PCO2 what happens is uh, they usually develop these compensatory mechanisms and they will have uh, a better control of things that means the person who is developing chronic respiratory acidosis is less likely going to coma because they have those compensatory systems and you say even for acute uh, respiratory acidosis compensations will start you see this acidosis think about compensation you need to increase uh, your, the ph that is you need to take the patient into the direction of uh, uh, alkalemia how can you do that increase bicarbonate so very easy you see think of uh, what can you do to in take the patient in the direction of uh, alkalemia and uh, the answer is increase the level of bicarb so the patient's level of bicarb and also decrease acid from the body how can you do that renal excretion you see so the first of all there will be respiratory compensation and after the respiratory compensation renal compensation starts so both are important for every 10 mm Hg increase in PCO2, the bicarb increase by 3.5 milli equivalents per liter and the pH decreases by 0 0.03. So you see the, the point is uh, the compensatory mechanisms, the respiratory and uh, renal compensatory mechanisms. Now treatment. Treatment is simple. Think about the causes and treat the causes. Now what is the basic problem here? respiratory depression so whatever is causing for example opiates are causing the respiratory depression treat the opiate uh, drug abuse and open up the lungs use bronchodilators BiPAP and intubate these patients and uh, take out that uh, CO2 that has been accumulated in the lungs so that's the basic treatment so the treatment is always treating the underlying cause which has precipitated the accumulation of CO2 in the lungs. If you can do that, my friend, you achieved your object. So basically, let me recap things. Respiratory acidosis is increase in PC water and a decrease in pH. Whatever muscular problem, brainstem problem, drug abuse, electrolyte abnormalities, cardiac problems, whatever problems that suppresses depression and uh, so, sorry that suppresses respiration and leads to the accumulation of CO2 in the lungs causes respiratory acidosis. And how can you see the patient? The patient's developing irritability, headache and stopper. Take a blood gas sample and see how is their pH. And if the pH is low and PCO2 is high, respiratory acidosis. Treat it. What can you do that? Treat the underlying cause. Open up the lungs. Start bronchodilators. And if there is a severe depression of uh, uh, respiration, start BiPAP. BiPAP is not working. Go for the other things. That is uh, intubation. That's about it. This Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.
to. Are you preparing for USMLE? Please do not waste thousands of dollars on training courses. Get the books written by Dr. Paul with the student-to-student -student tips and memory aids. The success will be yours, and you will soon realize your dream of becoming a physician in the United States. If you are preparing for Step 2 clinical skills, study USMLE Smasher, a guide helping thousands of medical students to pass this examination. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org.